Let's go to the tail of the tape back ringside. I'm Brian Kenny with Lennox Lewis and Andre Ward. F.A. Ajagba of Nigeria is the taller man in the ring, 6'6", with a long reach of 85 inches. He came in at 237 pounds. He has been five pounds heavier before, had a late start to boxing, but he's in his prime at 27. Frank Sanchez is six foot four tonight at the career high of 240 pounds. An amateur star in Cuba, he is now 29 years old. He's not much shorter than a Jogba, but there is a big difference in reach, a seven inch advantage for F.A. Ajagba. We are one fight away. There it is, Las Vegas, the strip at night. Beautiful scene there, Caesars Palace, the Bellagio. Tyson Fury has spoken often about this being the entertainment capital of the world. He lives here now as well. Fury, Wilder, one fight away, but here's a great fight. Ajagba, Sanchez, both unbeaten. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen from the T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas, Nevada, we bring to you our co-main event of the evening, presented by Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated. Frank Warren on behalf of Queensberry Promotions, Bomb Squad Promotions, and TGB Promotions, this is a premier boxing champion's presentation. Now this fight is presented in association with Warriors Boxing and sponsored by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more with America's number one sports book and Universal Pictures Halloween Kills in theaters October 15th. Introducing our judges scoring this bout from ringside, we have Lisa Jumpa, John McKay, and David Sutherland. All right, fans, here we go. A battle of undefeated heavyweights scheduled 10 rounds of boxing for the NABO and WBC Continental America's Heavyweight Championship. Introducing to you first on my right, he is fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing white trunks with blue and red trim, he is fighting out of Miami, Florida by way of Guantanamo, Cuba. He weighed in at 240 pounds. The former Cuban national champion is undefeated as a professional with a record of 18 wins, no losses, 13 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the defending NABO and WBC Continental America's heavyweight champion, the undefeated Cuban Flash, Frank. Sanchez and his opponent across the ring on my left fighting out of the red corner wearing black trunks with gold trim hailing from Ugeli, Nigeria he weighed in at a ready 237 pounds he also is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 15 wins no losses 12 wins coming by way of knockout Please welcome the former Olympian and the current undefeated, hard-hitting, world-ranked heavyweight contender, introducing the silent roller, F.A. Ajagba. And a referee in charge, now to give instructions, Michael Ortega. Gentlemen. Give me a good clean fight, Caballero. Dame una pelea limpia. Good luck to both of you. Buena suerte a los dos. Touch them up. Good luck. We may have said this before earlier in the night, but I can't believe they made this fight. Yeah. <laughs> Again, Andre Ward, I'm not used to nice things. This Are is you a, kidding me? Yeah, this is a real treat. Fighters of this caliber and on their way up, prospects, if you will, they don't typically risk the O. Facing right. one another, we got a treat tonight. There's Frank Sanchez, 18 and 0, and FAA Jogba, 15 and 0. We've seen both. Lennox, this is going to be exciting. This is going to be exciting. You know, Frank. Frank is fast, and he moves around the ring and he throws a fast right hand, fast combinations. But Ajagba's got that reach and strength. Again, Ajagba started boxing at 17. Sanchez has over 200 amateur wins, decorated Cuban amateur, and we're underway. Round one scheduled for 10. Ajakba and Sanchez, a fascinating matchup of young heavyweights, both undefeated coming in. Right in this first round, Sanchez is going to try to give Ajakba different looks. He's going to try to avoid that big right hand that Lennox just talked about. And Ajakba has to show that his work with Kay Karoma is starting to wear on him, where he's using his jab. He's being more patient. He's not just depending on the right hand, but he's learning to set it up. Ajakba has good wins, climbing the ladder, 
beat some rugged fighters. Yago Klatze, Amir Mansour, who is an older fighter, but a tough guy. So he's been put in tough already, and he's gotten wins. But I don't think he's faced anybody as complete as Frank Sanchez. Frank, Sa Frank Sanchez put on some weight. Uh, yeah. it, it looks good. I mean, uh, you got to put on a little weight when you're boxing against a heavier guy sometimes. Coming in 240, Lennox. Yeah. Correct. And again, he, he's six foot four, but again, a Chagba is six six. He's just he's ranging. The the wingspan is impressive. Yeah, this first round, they're just getting used to each other and, and, and figuring out the distance between each other. Nice popping jab, Frank Sanchez. Trying with the right hand. Uh, Sanchez makes a Chagba pay. You cannot just walk in on Sanchez. Plus, he showed that right hand before he threw it. Sometimes you got to disguise it with that jab. But I think he was doing the uh, good thing at first when he was jabbing to the stomach. And if there's a criticism of Frank Sanchez, Lennox, we've done his fights with Joe Goosen, and we've done that critique and saying, you know what? He wins easily, and he doesn't put his foot down on the accelerator. But here, against a Jogba, you he is likely to have no choice. This right. man's going to be coming after you. You must get physical and throw punches to stay him, to keep him away. Plus, the Jogba wants this fight. He wanted this fight, and he's, he's excited about the way how he ran into the ring. He's, you know, he means business. They both they both wanted this fight. I don't think it's bad blood, but I, I think there's some dislike there between both guys. Still a pretty slow round here, round number one again. That, that's part of the tension. Good hook by Sanchez. He's been able to answer against a Jogba early on in a Jogba. Uh, not quite sure what's coming back at him. Beautiful counter punch. The Jogba's a guy that likes to kick the front door down, and Sanchez is a guy that likes to come through the back door and maybe the side window. Final 30 seconds again, Frank Sanchez. We're at the distance. We saw his fight up close against Joey DeVeco back in March of 2020. And in that Lennox, you were saying, hey, he's very patient, maybe too patient. Like, I don't think he'll get that opportunity tonight. Yeah, he's, he's being a little bit patient right now, trying to figure out a jog but where he can get through to a jog. But I think he may even be trying to counter punch him, waiting for a jack to throw some punches so he can come back with, with his quick punches. I, I like the way he's answered, though. He is counter punched with ferocity. He has thrown hard things back at Ajakba. Interesting first round between unbeaten heavyweights. A rare matchup these days. The best welterweight in the world, Kamaru Usman. I am the welterweight champ for a reason. I'm a problem. Covington, there's nowhere to run and there's nowhere to hide. We got Usman, Thug Rose. That is a scary woman. I'm the best. Sean Wei Lee, she is a destroyer, vicious power. If you are a fight fan, you have to watch that fight. Are you kidding me? I cannot wait. Get me to New York. And on this, a uh, night of heavyweights, there's a heavyweight. You will learn to fear his Shaq Fu, Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> <laughs> Shaq is, yo. Know, Lennox, even you must walk up to Shaq and go, wow, this guy's enormous. Let me tell you, Shaq's my <laughs> friend, my friend, right? And I'm telling you, every time I go up to stand beside him, I'm like, yo, how big is this guy? Well, now he, you know how a, we feel when we're around that, you. That's yeah. exactly right. How do you like it? <laughs> round number two, that was an interesting first round. F.A. Ajagba in the black trunks, Frank Sanchez out of Cuba in the white and red trunks. Uh, definitely a feeling out round, but Ajagba, when he tried to throw his hands, he was answered pretty hard from Frank Sanchez. Not a lot of punches, though. Punches connected was 3-3 after one round. You get the feeling this is going to heat up. Chakba tries with the jab. Coming in, trying with a little more aggression now. And he's got a good look at Frank Sanchez. Again, he has to be careful. Sanchez is a complete fighter. An amateur champion in Cuba, which is saying something. Defected in 2016. An amateur record of 214 and 6. Think about that. Jogba tries with the jab. Sanchez moving back off the ropes. This is where Jogba has to mix up his punches. He cannot be just left, right, and uppercut. He's got to throw a jab to his belly. He's got to do different things like that. Again, it's not action-packed yet, uh, but there's real drama in the air here because there's real talent. And Jogba, you can tell, is electric. He's got a dynamite right hand. Sanchez is skilled. Tries with the double jab. Nobody wants to make a mistake. Heavyweight box right, right. go home early if they do. Exactly. By the way, I mentioned Sanchez sometimes a little too patient. In his next fight after that Joey DeVeco win, he got very aggressive. He knocked out Brian Howard in the fourth round a month later. Just one month later, he knocked out 
Julian Fernandez knocked him out of the ring in the seventh. So where there was real aggression from Sanchez. Sanchez now moves southpaw. Back to orthodox. This is what I was talking about, fellas, that Sanchez wants to give a Ajagba so many different looks. Southpaw, right hand. He wants to feint, then he wants to throw jabs, and then every now and again he'll try to sneak a big shot. That's the style and the mindset of Frank Sanchez. Pawing with the jab, Ajagba. But if he is driving Sanchez back, I think that is... Uh, an early sign of some success. He's got to keep on driving him back. He's got to step it up a little bit more and put Sanchez against the ring. Against the rope, sorry. Final 30 seconds of round number two. Things starting to pick up. Feeling there could be some fantastic action here, but it has not happened as of yet. Both men being very careful. And this is the, as they call it, Lennox with right hand by Ajagba. That's right. dangerous. This is the semi-final. Which means the final is next. The final is the heavyweight championship of the world. Both fighters have to establish their jab. I mean, a lot better than they're doing that. That's the second round. Let's go to Tyson Fury's locker room. I can't tell what they're singing right there. I'm not sure, but he's <laughs> loose. Brian Kenny here, Lennox yeah. Lewis, Andre Ward. Big excitement for the heavyweight championship of the world. Lennox, your thoughts as we get closer. Hey, I'm excited about it. You know, it's, it's stirring up right now. You can tell Tyson Fury is feeling good. He's in a good place. He's, he's playing some good music in his dressing room. That's a good sign. I, I love this moment because it's all mental from here. The work is done. The physical work is done. The promotion is done. And literally all the talking is over with. And some you can lose a fight from now until the time you get into the ring. Oh, so it's fuck. important for both guys to maintain their composure and remember why they're here and what they've come out to accomplish. That's coming up next. Heavyweight Championship of the World, Tyson Fury. He is the champion, goes in. Deontay Wilder is the challenger this time around. Here now the semifinal, again, co-feature. Ajapa in the black trunks throwing a hard right hand to Frank Sanchez. In the white trunks, round three, it's been slow, but a lot on the line. I like that double jab that Sanchez threw. He came and came across with a great overhand right hand. Sanchez wants a knockout in this fight, but he has enough experience as an amateur to know, and even as a pro, to know that it's it comes in stages when you're facing a big guy like a Ajagba. And I'm not saying he's going to get it, but that's what he's he's looking for. He wants to box, box, load Ajagba to sleep, and then all of a sudden come with a big right hand and hope that he hurts Ajagba. Yeah, Sanchez looking to explode, Andre. You're right. Just Good. like oh, that. Double up on the jab and then a right hand cuffs Ajagba. That's probably the best shot of the fight. Because that's one of the downsides of a Jacqua style is he's got a good style, he's steady, he's strong, but he doesn't show different nuances and different rhythms, so it can easily be timed. And there is an example of that experience as well, Andre, where Sanchez is able to get underneath that hook rather easily. Right hand from a Jacqua as well. Action is picking up. Let's go to Bernardo Asuna. Bernardo, what do you have? Just what Andre was describing is exactly what Eddie Reynoso was asking the Cuban Flash to do. He said, I want you to change levels. Go with the jab downstairs. Use that jab to the top. But more importantly, all that sets up that overhand right. Bernardo, thank Heidi, you. Heidi, what do you have? Oh. Yeah, pretty similar. <laughs> you know, I spoke to Kei Karoma. He told me, let his hands go more. They want to see the jab. Quit waiting. Don't get careless. But he's oh. already short. Come up under it. Go with the, Go to the body with the right hand. As they exchange shots to the head, Sanchez buzzing the tower. And this is where Ajagba has to make the in-fight adjustment. Okay, you came in the fight with a game plan, but now you got to make an adjustment because you're getting hit with the right hand. Let's see if he can do it. Again, this is a this is what happens when top guys fight each other. <laughs> it's hard to figure out what's going to happen. They, Andre, you can tell they don't know what's going to happen. Very right? high level. Don't know. Well, let me tell you, if they don't throw any punches and there's only one guy throwing the punches, something's going to happen. 
But I just think Ajagba is having to think more than he's ever had to in his professional boxing career, and that's due to the different looks and the different angles and the different approaches that Frank Sanchez is presenting. Much yeah, more experienced fighter. But what he, right. need, what he needs to do is throw that jab. He needs to throw that jab over time. It doesn't need to be a hard jab, but he needs to still throw it. Keep and Ajagba, it going. Yeah, Keep he's it going. had a good jab the first two rounds. He's just not changing it up, so I think Sanchez is starting the time. Ajagba tries with the hook to the body, trying to press the action now. Moving in, that's a beautiful jab by Frank Sanchez. Snaps the head back and the locks of Ajagba as well. Nice Hi. showy punch to the judges. Again, the main event is next. Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder. And here is the weigh-in, Deontay Wilder. Coming in at 238 pounds, that is a career high. Tyson Fury, he said he'd be up near 300, that was not the case. Comes in at 277. And look at 6'9", 273, 277, that's one steak, right? Or maybe some cheesecake. <laughs> not much for Fury. By the way, Alexander Usyk, congratulations to him. He beats Anthony Joshua two weeks ago. He's got several of the belts. I know it's all complicated. But I'm sure Max will back me up on this. Tyson Fury is the heavyweight champion of the world. He's got the WBC belt. He's got the Ring Magazine belt. If Joshua had won, he would definitely have a case to say, hold on, fellas, you, you, you got to deal with me. Now him losing for the second time to Ruiz and Usyk. Usyk should get a shot eventually, but they're likely to rematch. And here tonight, we'll see the heavyweight king recrowned. And here, F.A. Ajagba and Frank Sanchez ready to go Round number four, scheduled for 10. And a good way for K. Karoma to try to get a Ajagba going is just to tell him to faint. That means just use your shoulders to faint and look like you're going to throw a punch just to get him in a rhythm and then start to punch off the feints just so you start to give an experienced guy like Sanchez different looks as well and possibly can hide that big right hand. Yeah, that's important to do that because right now he's just being straight up and down and not giving not giving Sanchez no different looks. Jab has to be going for a big guy, especially when the guy's moving around the ring like Sanchez. Ajakba trying with the jab there to the body. Again, trying to be active. The you know, punch has landed. It's, it's 15 to 10 in favor of Frank Sanchez. It's not much, but if you were to tally maybe the five, six most effective punches of the night, they're all Frank Sanchez. Nice right hand there by Ajakba. Maybe that's into that top five now. At least able to touch him with a scoring shot. 12 of his 15 wins coming by knockout. When Ajakba hits you, a lot of times the other guy will go. Yeah, he's. Ajakba has to let these hands go. He's got Frank Sanchez up against the ropes, moving side to side, and nothing's coming at him. He needs punches coming at him so he can, you know, cover or move back in the center of the ring. And Ajakba Lennox is normally busier. He averages 63 punches per round. Sanchez more selective. He averages 41. So they fight very differently. Big hook tried by Sanchez. It was it actually connected. Sanchez is going to continue to sneak those shots in there as this fight progresses because he realizes that Ajagba falls asleep at certain points. He starts to pose and take pictures, and Sanchez is trying to take full advantage. And again, this is what happens when top guys meet. Again, these guys are at the top of the division. They both like to crack into the top 10, but they're both, you know, reasonably at the same level. 15 and 0, 18 and 0, 27 years old, 29 years old about to enter into that top 10, you would think. So a lot on the line, high stakes here in Las Vegas. And the reason young guys like this on the way up don't take these chances is because it's a setback for a young guy, an asset for a promotional company, a prospect, if they lose. But respect to both of these guys for taking that risk. No question. And whoever gets a, an L, gets a, gets a one on their record, so what, right? Uh, you would hope. But unfortunately, this is boxing. Yeah. You know how it goes. Well, we can, do, we can do our job then. We can. Say, hey, this guy lost, but he put it on the line. Fought a real guy. Yeah, it's like Sean Porter lost razor close to Errol Spence. Did the fans think less of Sean Porter? No. Not at all. I hear Sean has a fight coming up, too. Not <laughs> <laughs> Time. There we go. Ajagba and Sanchez still reasonably slow. By the way, I hear he's fighting that guy, Terrence Crawford, one of the top fighters in the world, pound for pound, as he finally gets the crossover fight with the guys on the other side of the aisle and Sean Porter coming up in November. Oh, Ryan Garcia is here. 
electrifying young fighter. And then I'll get a better look at Shaq, please. Do we do a tail of the tape for Shaq, please? Yes! <laughs> 7 1 3 24, Lennox, if you're wondering. Wow. Oh, look at it. From Mike Tyson himself, former heavyweight champion of the world, the youngest heavyweight champion ever. The eyes of the gods of war are upon you. I tried to give them. That's flexion. pretty heavy. Yeah. That's a pretty heavy <laughs> team. Thanks, Mike. You guys get along, right? Yeah, you oh, are. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my buddy. That's Lennox speaking, by the way. Not, you know, that, <laughs> they had a fight. Long they ago. got history. It was, long, yeah, it was long ago. A little history. Yeah. Uh, we're talking heavyweight history. And again, uh, undefeated champions and great champions and great punchers. Tyson, certainly one of the greatest punchers of all time. So is Deontay Wilder. Here, round five, scheduled for 10. F.A. Ajagba, again, out of Nigeria in the black trunks. Frank Sanchez of Cuba in the white and red. And this is high level stuff. It is yeah. slow, but it's high level. Yeah, but I mean, the punches, the exchanges are explosive, even when they don't fully land like that, because you realize that if that landed, Sanchez would have had some trouble. Uh, but if I'm in the corner of a jock, but I'm telling him, son, I'm trying to encourage him. Keep using your jab. You can win this fight. I don't know if you're up. You may be down, but just keep shooting your right hand, shooting your left hook. It doesn't have to be hard. Just keep putting them in there. Something will land. Brian Kenny, Lennox, Lewis, Andre Ward here ringside. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't thought about the scoring this fight at all. Thankfully, Larry Hazard has. Larry, I, I just don't want to miss anything here, but it, it's got to be scored. How do you have it so far? All right, thank you, Brian. I got 39-37 for Sanchez. He's showing what we call a ring generalship. There's not a lot of significant punches landing, but he's using ring generalship, side to side, back and forth, and the most effective punches that have been scored have been scored by Sanchez. So I have my head, 39-37. Good points, Larry, thank you. Larry, unofficial scorer, of course, Boxing Hall of Famer, but again, giving you an indication of how the judges would have it. Again, even in what is, you know, again, reasonably fairly slow, 21 to 18 in punches landed. Yeah, but a Jagba has to throw uh, different punches. I haven't seen the hook by a Jagba. He's thrown a couple body punches, but he's got to go back to the body. You know, if he goes to the head, finish on the body, and I don't know if he's scared to get hit or something, but he's not throwing the punches. Uh, I think, right, I think you've hit on it there, Lennox, because when he was throwing before, Sanchez answered with something nasty just two or three times yes. but that that will discourage you from letting your hands go that may be some of it fellas but i just think that a jogba has to it's hard to teach a fighter or encourage a fighter to throw punches and know that hey if they don't land clean they're still effective hey if you hit hit a guy with a right hand to the body just know that that's still a good punch i think a jogba either wants that big knockout punch or he feels like he can't throw you got to convince him otherwise crowd is uh, filling up here at the t-mobile arena getting ready for the main event and uh, I, I heard some i don't know disgruntled, I don't want to call them booze, but fans not happy. <laughs> it's like, I want to say, wait, no, no, this is a good fight. Well, I, I think know it's not exciting. Don't worry. Yeah, one please. punch changes the booze yeah. into cheers. And Sanchez better stay woke as well because that one punch could very well come from a Ajakba. That's, that's a sharp jab for Frank Sanchez, but no question. Uh, Andre Ajakba has a dynamite right hand. Not easy to land, though, against Sanchez. Oh, uh -oh. Break, break. Behind the head. Let's go. There we go. That's the fifth round in the semifinal. Let's take a look at what else is being said out there. Uh, all right, this uh, from Michael Benson. It's uh, JD's watching closely as Tyson Fury gets his hands wrapped. And Fury tells him, "You missed the knuckle <laughs> dusters last time." Again, JD's weighing him. By the way, JD's was there, was there last time, and so. Deontay Wilder making accusations for something being in the gloves. Uh, they, Fury asked, wasn't JD's in there watching? H how did he miss it? Let's go to Heidi Entral. Thank you very much, Brian. Well, yesterday, some interesting drama occurred. I'm told that when Deontay Wilder was back trying on his gloves, he had three pairs, as many fighters do. They try them on, they see what fits. Well, he didn't like any of them. Uh, so he moved from the Power Locks gloves to the MX gloves. I am told that they were on the approved list. They were factory sealed, and so they allowed it to happen. Brian, your thoughts on that, guys? Yeah, that, that's fascinating. Again, that really gets into the minutia of it. But again, Andre Ward, Lennox Lewis have had experience in this. As we go to round six, your thoughts on the gloves and the change of gloves. MX gloves, what, what are they exactly, Andre? Well, the Power Lock gloves that Deontay Wilder wore in the last fight, they're all foam. The, the MX gloves have 
foam and horse hair. So those are the same type of gloves, even though it's a different brand that Tyson Fury wore. That's why you see the indentation and people say, well, those gloves look worn. Are they really? That's what happens when you have horse hair. The horse hair moves around in the glove. So now Deontay said, okay, you're going to have horse hair and foam. I'm going to have horse hair and foam too. Yeah, but he's supposed to know this from his last couple fights. Uh, what fight, what gloves really suit him. I knew what gloves suited me, and I always wore them. What did you use, Lance? Reyes. So that's the puncher's glove. It's a puncher's glove, the yeah. knockout glove. And that's also what they call a puncher's glove, one that has horse hair and mm -hmm. foam, not just foam. Nice jab there by Frank Sanchez here, round number six. We are uh, moving along, second half of this fight. Not a lot of action, high level young heavyweights going after each other, uh, but has not turned into a firefight as of yet. Right hand tried in a counter right by Sanchez. That landed. A beautiful counter from Sanchez with his back to the corner. The Jogba, when he's throwing his punches, is falling in and smothering himself. He needs to keep that distance. I, I don't care. I still love this fight, guys. I love this fight. And people are like, oh, where's the action? It's like in Carson, California. If it ever goes more than uh, like 10 seconds without guys trading, they'll boo. But this is excellent. Is that, there's a lot on the line. There's a lot at stake. What you're seeing is two big men. You're seeing one big man that's a better boxer than the other big man, and he's neutralizing his opponent's big right hand. So that's exciting to some people. You know, a knockdown drag out is exciting too, but this unfortunate, not unfortunately, but this is just part of the game. Yeah, they're starting to boo. I, I get it. You want to be entertained, but uh, I don't know, I dig it. Do I want to see them throw their hands? Sure. Sanchez winging the big right hand that missed. And I actually think Sanchez can do more offensively right now while at the same time being smart, but he doesn't want to take that chance of getting hit with a Jogba's right hand. Do you think, given that we've talked about this, 10 rounds is a long time. Do you think he's got something in mind later? I think he's going to keep picking it up, absolutely. Yeah, I think so, too. No, he he, wants, he's, he just, a, he's a very experienced player. Yes. Hey, Sanchez would do better in a bigger ring, but this is a little bit small for him, so he's always up against the ropes, but you can tell that he needs a bigger ring. Exchange there in the right hand from a Jogba, and there is always danger. It's an electrifying right hand. Or I should say the ring gets small when you got a six foot uh, seven guy in there. You got to understand where Sanchez comes from, the national team in Cuba, and it's all about winning. No matter how you win, just win. That's oh. the mindset that he has. I don't know about that because he got hit while he was throwing that Did he get punch. hit before he slipped? Because that, it's being ruled a slip. Let me see that replay. Mike Ortega rules it a slip. We will absolutely take a look at that and see it just happened in a flash. Yeah, I'm telling you, you got hit before that. Uh, interesting. Now, it looked like he did slip, but Lennox, to your point, it was a jab, and then he missed. Is that a knockdown? Hang on. Huh, I tell you what. Yeah. He should have been, he should have, I don't know, it's pretty close, pretty close. They have replay here in Nevada, correct? <laughs> We're in Las Vegas. Yeah, look at this. I yeah. Don't now, he swung and he missed. They're reviewing it. I tell you what. Lennox, you're right. That's a knockdown. It's a flash yeah. knockdown, yeah. but I think it's a knockdown. And yeah, the punch got, the punch kind of swung him down, but I think it was the punch more than it was the missed punch from Sanchez. Well put, Andre. Right? Was it both? Did he swing? Yes. But when you pop a guy, swings and goes down in one motion, that that helped him down. That yeah. glove touches the canvas. That's a knockdown. Let's see. Now they've got to make a ruling on this reasonably fast. I don't. Let's find out. I know Jay Nady in the past has been the guy who's been looking at it. So we're, we're being told there's Bernardo as soon as looking at me right now. No, not a knockdown says Bernardo. Thank you Bernardo. Wow. I disagree maybe not vehemently your thoughts. I disagree because he got hit while he was swinging the punch. Yeah in real time it's hard to catch that but with the replay I think it's a bit clear. Oh no Andre exactly right. I don't blame Mike Ortega in the moment you yep. see a big swing and a miss and he goes down. <laughs> he didn't quite see the pop and then he goes down. So wow. Frank Sanchez getting a big break. That is not a knockdown officially for F.A. Ajagba. Now, a judge can look at that and say, well, that won the round. Certainly, that was a good shot. And it also reminds you of Ajagba's power, right? Just a nice little pop, and suddenly Sanchez, at his size, went to the canvas briefly. Ajagba's a very passionate guy, and he's a guy that you have to 
motivate and give instructions to. Not just instruct, you have to give him instructions, tell him what he needs to do and how to do it, but also you got to do a little rah rah. You got to let him know, son, you're here for a reason. Don't let this slip away. Sanchez doesn't want to exchange. He's afraid of your right hand. Let's be smart, but let's go out there and win this fight. Sanchez getting nasty now. He threw a big right hand and then landed the jab. Now he steps back, tippy toeing back. Well, he got a big break in that last round. But Lennox, to your point, that's what you want to see. You want to see him dig it in, double jab, throw something hard. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna have to bring it to the streets. He's gonna have to really go for it. Because he's letting these these rounds slip away. And I don't think that's what he wants to do. So it, you know, when his corner gets him, he's gonna Good his corner is gonna tell him, listen, you need to pick it up even more. You need to go mad. Sanchez there with a nice uppercut, able to catch a Jokma. Uh, the punch has landed. It is about even. Extremely close, as Larry Hazard said. I agree with this. The better shots have been landed by Sanchez, with the exception of the one that actually put Sanchez down. I think the best way for Coach Karoma to kind of break a Jogba out of this little rut he's in is to inspire him, paint the picture, give him the vision that he can win. Hmm. Final minute, round number seven. Yeah, everybody has different buttons. Yeah, I mean, in in the Jogba's head, he just wants to throw that right hand and get get rid of Frank Ch Sanchez. But you know, waiting for that one punch. Big right hand. That Lando Jogba takes a knee, and then he gets hit as his knee was on the canvas. Sanchez didn't mean to do it, but he did. Time, time. It's a knockdown. Hit at when he's down. Go to neutral corner. You all right? Mike Ortega all right, saw all of that. Calls time. It Knock, was a knockdown and then an illegal knockdown. shot. Knockdown. Ready? Box. Wow, and back they go. All right, so that's a knockdown. What, what does... I mean, he should have gotten a count as well. He did, he did get a count. But he got back up. And, but he also got hit. I mean, a job, this is remarkable. A job looks okay. He got hit once, got, went down, and got hit twice. A Jogba was hurt. A Jogba was hurt, especially when he was down. And that second punch didn't really hurt him too much, but it did add to it. Oh, normally, you get hit with some you know, winging power shot while you're on a knee. You get your head taken off. This is fascinating. Another look. Right hand, he's hurt. And he takes the knee. Bang. I mean, that is a devastating hook. And somehow a Jogba ate it. And was okay. Now watch this. I don't think Sanchez meant to do that in slow mo. No, it looks a little I, worse, but I don't believe so. Yeah, Sanchez tail, did not mean to do that. It's that's just a tail. That's no, he didn't mean to do that. Be, you know, it's all in the motion of, of the combination. He's throwing the right hand. Obviously, got to follow with the, the left hook. Or uppercut. Andre, when the guy's are, down. are you saying you disagree? I'm saying I don't know. Okay. It's tough to tell what the man's intentions are. When it are. happened live, it's I, did, I didn't it's feel tough. it. I didn't it's feel tough. it live, but uh, you're right. You watch it in slow mo, you're like, oh, come on, you gotta stop punching. That is the second time that F.A. Ajakba has been down in his career. But wow, it is getting interesting. The knockdown that was not a knockdown in the sixth for Ajakba. And then a Jokba goes down. And that's a big swing on the cards as well. Another right hand lands from Sanchez. And he is rocked by a hook and an uppercut. We talked about Sanchez picking things up. And he's doing that right now. You can see the quality of Frank Sanchez. Not to take anything away from a Jokba, But Sanchez just has a lot more in his arsenal. But Jokba's got to remember why he took this fight. Because there was some dislike. They, they had an issue. And you got to keep that same energy even in a situation like this. And that's why I'm saying inspiration may be the thing right now to remind a Jokba Go out there and win this fight because Sanchez is trying to knock you out. You know, Bernardo Asuna is telling us that the commission says that Ajakba's knee was not down when he got hit with that hook. Oh, I, I thought his knee was, was down. Was. Yeah, I thought <laughs> it was too. Well, that's a tough call. It's a tough call. Well, it's a way of telling. You have replay. By yeah. the way, you want to go, go take a look? No, I wouldn't want to see Sanchez disqualified for that. But, no, no, no. But, but if a Jogba went down to stay, you'd have to consider it as an illegal shot, right? Because in real time, you don't know if a fighter's ducking down to come back up. You don't know. Right. It, right. We're going to watch it again. Watch on the left now. Let's see if that knee is down when he took that shot. He starts to go down from the right hand. He takes the knee. Knees down. Bang. Yeah, that knee's down. That's Come late. on, guys. That's late, fellas. Come on. 
you know, also, that they could have, like, taken a look at that. They could have paused things and also give a Jotba a chance to recover, right? You yeah. get hit with an illegal shot, uh, you should get five, you get a maximum of five minutes. That's, that's a big switch. Now, Jotba looks fine, but, yeah. you know, that, that could have been handled better. I think the ref lost his equilibrium in there and just really didn't know he didn't count. I think he was a bit confused on what the call should have been. And it, and it is difficult to it point. Is, yeah, it's difficult yeah. to do that in real time. And Ortega, I thought, saw everything happen perfectly, so he ruled right now. That's a knockdown and then an illegal shot, but the illegal shot never really came to fruition. And here's Larry Hazard's scorecard. Now he's got Sanchez up big with that 10-8 round. And no 10-8 round the other way because it was not counted as a knockdown for Ajakba. It's time for the Angelo Dundee speech for Ajakba. Yeah. You're blowing it, son. You're blowing it. You need to go out there and get a knockout or you're going home a loser tonight. Sometimes you got to stand flat-footed and tell your fighter that in hopes that you, they, they, you know, they wake up and go out there and get it done. Especially these last two rounds. You got to say you win. You got to win I'm these saying. last two rounds. That's what I'm saying. You got to win these last two rounds. Big E from WWE is here. There were a lot of big heavyweights here. Magic is here, Magic Johnson. His Dodgers down to the Giants. How is he out here? Are they off tonight? And then Andy Ruiz, former heavyweight champion. Beat Anthony Joshua, stunned him at Madison Square Garden, then lost in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. But he looked pretty good last time against a very spirited Chris Ariola. I hear we're gonna see him again relatively soon. He had knee surgery. We hope to see Andy Ruiz back in the ring quite soon. You see the crowd in here, T-Mobile Arena. Uh, a lot of strange things happening there in these last few rounds. Come on, man. Come on, man. FA doesn't look good in his eyes. He just looks like he's not here right now. He's discouraged, and he doesn't have any answers. Interesting turn of events in this battle of undefeated heavyweights. F.A. Ajakba 15-0, Frank Sanchez 18-0. See the odds changing as we go. Sanchez, again, looks to be the more complete fighter, but Ajakba has real power. Probably should have gotten a knockdown in this fight that he was not uh, credited with. Sanchez with a slight lead and punches landed. Lands his own hard shots as well. It's been an, an interesting fight, and it's not fight of the year by any means, but it's a good fight. High stakes. Sanchez has so much speed that he can, you know, almost cross his hands and show you some kind of different thing, and then all of a sudden come out with a left hook or right hand. All right, let's get some reports here now, because a lot happened here. Let's go to Heidi Angel first. Heidi? Yeah, you guys were talking about firing F.A. Ajagba up in the corner. Well, I'll tell you what, Coach <laughs> Karoma is fired up in the corner. He's not happy. He said he's not letting his hands go. He's waiting on Frank Sanchez, and that is not what they talked about. They also told him, hey, you need the knockout. Go for it now. Bernardo, what do you got over there? Eddie Reynoso is happy with the way things are going. He wants uh, Sanchez to continue using the jab counter punch, and he just wants him not to take risks because he understands that in front of him, he's got an explosive right hand in his opponent at Jogba. Bernardo Heidi, thank you so much. Round nine, scheduled for 10, and the heavyweight championship of the world is up next. See, Lennox, I'm trying to pace myself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll burn, my, oh, I'll burn myself out. Get so excited watching these guys. I would figure Tyson Fury is up and getting dressed now. <laughs> yeah, you can be relaxed, but at a certain point. By the way, Angelo Dundee, that was Sugar Ray Leonard against Tommy Hearns, 1981. Welterweight Championship of the World, one of the greatest fights in history for you kids out there. And it's easy to be on the outside saying, go for broke, go for broke, when it's just a Jagba opening himself up could cause him to get caught and maybe knocked out. So you got to answer the question, do I want to go quietly or do I want to make some noise? That's the question you have to answer. Well, he knows he can get hurt. He's done it, be he's done it before, he's tried it, and he got hurt. He got knocked down a couple times. So, uh, you know, what he needs to do is throw a different array of punches. Where's that left hook? Can't just depend on his right hand. Where's the uppercut? Where's the body punches? Good counter from a Jagba right there. Now, Jagba is trying. Again, that is the risk reward, Andre, to your point. Is that a Jogba going in and let his hands go? He's got a nice right hand by a Jogba there. Was able to time him. 
but again, he can get countered with something hard. He will open himself up, and he could get starched. It all, it all seen. Sanchez yeah. has real power. It all boils down to what you can live with. Yep. You wake up Sunday morning, what do you want, you know, what can you live with? Either going out on your mm. shield or, you know, maybe going away quiet. <laughs> Andre, you should be in corners, by the way. You're inspiring us. I know a little something. <laughs> you sound like Teddy Atlas all of a sudden. Get in there. All right, let's go to the corner and listen up. Watching him wait, you you waiting on him to hit you, man. You got to knock this boy out, and you ain't gonna knock him out walking around. Come on, man. You had a good ass camp, and now you gonna do this. You had a great camp. You got the punch, man. You got the punch. <laughs> wow. Well, Andre, what do you think of that? Kei Karoma actually had to start throwing combinations. They, 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 they got the, the Angelo Dundee and some. Round 10, final round here. These two undefeated heavyweights, F.A. Ajakba in the black, Frank Sanchez in the white and red. Final round before the heavyweight championship of the world, but this has been an interesting fight. We've seen one official knockdown. We've seen two actual knockdowns. Saw an illegal shot, but it's high-level stuff between these two undefeated heavyweights. Chagba moving in, but still reasonably cautious, not letting it go as of yet. And Sanchez isn't just standing there getting ready to get hit. It's going to be a moving target. He moves his head well. Absolutely. There it is, right hand, able to touch him. Got to touch him before you can hurt him. Yeah, one of the punches uh, Jogba needs to throw is a right hand to the belly before, you know, just to get his eyes down there and then come, come over the top. Strategy, Lennox. Well, we have not seen that. It's not really in his arsenal. Big hook try by Sanchez. Sanchez is going to try to go up top. Sanchez man, comes up, yeah. slips under and comes up with a big right. He's going to try a couple more times before the end of this round. That was a nice move. I think San Sanchez has been told anytime a jog bar throws that right hand, come back with your right hand. I remember asking our colleague Joe Goose when we were watching one of these fights, and I said, well, you, you think a lot of Sanchez, is he going to be a world champ? And he goes, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he was like, oh, no, yeah, look what you're looking at here. Sanchez has a real future, and this would be a signature win. Again, a lot at stake, but there's a lot to gain when you go in in a fight like this. High risk, high reward. Final half of the final round. Not a lot yet from Ajakba. So far, Sanchez probably winning this round as well. Sanchez is going to try that overhand right one or two more times to see if he can get one through. Uh, this is a precursor to what we're going to see in the main event where, you know, Tyson Fury is not standing there with his head straight up getting a hit. But you still have to throw. Deontay Wilder is going to have to throw, even if it hits air. Ajakba is going to have to throw or he is not going to be able to knock out Frank Sanchez. Final 45 seconds. A lot at stake, a lot on the line. These guys should be entering the top 10. Winners should be at the very least. And it appears the winner will be Frank Sanchez. And Jogba not able to have sustained success in this fight. Yeah, Jogba has to, you know, throw different combinations, different punches. He's got to throw that hook, that lead hook, maybe a straight right hand one time. And I said, look, uh, Jogba has a lot of fight in him, but what he heard in the corner and what he's done here in the 10th round, Andre, I mean, hasn't happened. I mean, he hasn't, he hasn't assaulted him at any point in this round. He tried a few things, but just too little, too late. And, and this, is what I, this, is, this is what I mean. You know, you can tell your fighter anything, but he has huh. to be able to do that in the ring. Ten rounds, a lot at stake, and Frank Sanchez looks like he's the better man. He may have caught a break. No. Might have been a knockdown. Uh, Lennox, I'm with you. I thought it was a knockdown, but he caught a break there. Could have been a 10-8 round, and that will help him. I don't know how close the scoring will be. Larry Hazard doesn't have it close, but we've been fooled before. It shouldn't be close at all. Okay. I'm with you. But we've seen strange things. Decision is coming up. 
Tonight's pay-per-view is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more. Bet the fight now. And by Universal Pictures Halloween Kills in theaters October 15th. The main event is next. Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King, 30-0-1. That one came from Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder, the Bronze Bomber, 42-1-1. The one and the one came from Tyson Fury. Third time around, they are bigger than ever, and it is for the heavyweight championship of the world. Moments away here in Las Vegas. We just saw two undefeated heavyweights, and we saw some, some strange things in this fight as well. We saw knockdowns with wondering about things. He had a hard right hand from Sanchez early on, able to counter and make a Jogba pay any time he just stepped to him. A Jogba has real power. Sanchez wary of that. The wary again, probably caught a break. This is the knockdown. Took a knee. His knee bounced down and came back up. But once your knee is down, you're down. He's down. That knee can come back up. But, right? Am I yeah, wrong? Yeah, yeah. That, no. knee, that knee is down, and if it comes back up, but you still took a knee, you're down. Right. You know, you should be protected at that point. He was not. Now, fortunately, I don't think it changed this fight. No. But I, I've seen guys take shots like that where they go down and it's, they're done. Yeah, you know? yeah. This, this fight came down to experience, amateur experience bringing into the pros because Frank Sanchez has so much experience. Right. You know, he knows how to move. He knows the different punches to throw. And he, he did a great job in this fight. Great, great job. Smart boxing. Boxing IQ. It will be interesting. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. and get the decision. Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge of ringside, John McKay scores about 97 to 92. Judges David Sutherland and Lisa Jumpa both score the action 98 to 91. All three in favor of the winner. And still the undefeated heavyweight title holder, the Cuban Flash, Frank Sanchez. I think they got the decision right, fellas. Yeah. Frank Sanchez wins it, and again, even with that knockdown, that really wouldn't have changed things as Frank Sanchez did enough to win by points.